Well, on this Monday morning, it is a very big welcome to the programme and thanks for joining us for Rip Off Britain coming to you live. Yep, we're going to be here every morning this week tackling the issues that matter most to you, whether that's poor service or scammers trying to get their hands on your money. Too many of them and we can't wait to get <laughs> stuck into it. I tell you, what we especially love about being live is that you can contact us or any of our team experts while we're on the air. That's the point, really, because you can get instant results Absolutely. and I love all of that. And you can do that by uh, emailing us at ripoffbritain at bbc.co.uk or we're on Facebook. You type in BBC Rip Off Britain and we'll try and solve as many of your problems as we possibly can before the end of the show. Now you might be tempted to fire off a query to one of today's guests in particular. He's Lawrence Slade and he's here to speak on behalf of all the big energy companies. That's important. And I'll be quizzing him about why so many of you contact us absolutely confused about your energy bills. And a prime example is a man we'll be meeting who received no less, wait for this girls, <laughs> he received 10 bills all for different amounts, some saying he owed, some said he didn't, in just one day. Now, it's extraordinary. It is. Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, also on the programme, we opened up a real can of worms after revealing on our main series last month that for years, your water company could have been charging you for something you don't need. So, shouldn't you be getting your money back? Well, we've got news on that coming up. Plus lots of others, because it's never too early in the morning to get your dancing shoes on, as Gloria did when she met her old friend, the singer and Strictly star, Daniel O'Donnell, to find out his consumer secrets. And then what happened? The poor man went out last night. Oh, oh shame. shame. <laughs> and Rip Up Britain, of course, wouldn't be the same without our absolutely fabulous pop-up shop. So it's great because we've set up outside on the piazza, right outside the studio, ready for the next five mornings, especially for you. Yep, we're opening up our drop-in consumer advice clinic right outside our studio. You can see it there. So if you're passing, why not pop in and we'll see if our experts can tackle your problems on the spot. And today it's personal finance queen Sarah Pennells and technology guru David McClelland. So lots going on this morning, but before all that, how about this? It's estimated that last year Brits were conned out of nearly £24 million by fraudsters operating over the phone. And get this, brand new research done specially for our programme by the Money Advice Service suggests that there are eight scam calls generated every single second, which is quite extraordinary. Mm. And what's more, 63% of us will have had a suspicious call in the last 12 months. Actually, I've had two in the last week. I just think while you've been talking there, what, 10 seconds? That means 80 of our viewers have had one of those calls. Mathematician Angela. Oh, just, Genius. Yeah, just <laughs> one of the services we offer. And as if all of that wasn't bad enough, there is a truly terrifying way that some of these calls are now seeming more plausible. And it's becoming increasingly common. Indeed, and remember, if you are at all suspicious about any cold call, whoever it is that seems to be calling, just put the phone down. It really could be the best move that you'll ever make. That's the best advice, isn't it, really? Absolutely. It's my golden rule. If I pick up the phone and there isn't a voice there immediately, I put the phone down because I well, think I've just been dialed randomly. I know. And in our case, we had two calls this week, one of them, by the way, at 10 to 8 in the morning, which I thought was, like, really pathetic. But the first one came through in terms of hacking. And so my husband, he took the call, and I could see him panicking and think, oh, everything's been hacked. Mm. And I'm mouthing across the kitchen, put the phone down, this is a scam. Mm -hmm. But they're very authentic sounding, and yeah. you can be in. Yeah. Anyway, do let us know if you've been caught out by a spoof call, and I'm sure we'll return to this subject again and again. But still to come this morning... Now, last month we reported how one in five online reviews are reckoned to be fake. Well, the papers this morning are reporting that the retailer Amazon is taking legal action against some of the people that write to them, and rightly so, I think. Yeah, darn right. Anyway, also in the news, MPs are worried that people aren't getting as much information about the recent pension reforms as they should be, leaving them vulnerable to dodgy businesses hoping to take advantage of the fact that over 55s can now take lump sums out of their pension pots. And it's a very confused area. In fact, I just uh, picked out this particular headline today, which says it all. It has become a bit of a fiasco. So actually on the programme, we're going to be trying to keep you up to date with what you should and shouldn't do. So remember, everything we look into comes from your letters and emails. It's the great strength of this programme. It's all based on you, really. And one of the most satisfying things about the job is that very often we really do get fantastic fantastic results on your behalf. And we've got an amazing example of that in a moment. But first, here's the latest on some of the other stories we've investigated in the past. Fantastic result, but if you discover that you've been paying too much for your water, do let us know how you get on with your supplier. I'm sure it's a story we're going to be looking at again. 
probably again and again. But uh, this week is all about helping to solve your problems, which Angela is getting ready to do right now in our pop-up shop right outside behind my shoulder here on the piazza. Thanks, Chloe. Well, I'm with our technology expert, uh, David McClelland, uh, alongside Teresa Bune. Because, uh, Teresa, you got a real frustration because your son, Tom, had £3,000 worth of games that he downloaded onto his gaming site, hacked, and you can't get them back, can you? No. What have you been trying to do to get in touch with the company? We've tried emailing, which is the only means of contact, which is very frustrating because they haven't responded, and it'd be just nice to be able to speak to somebody at the end of a phone. Yeah, because you're £3,000 down at the moment, aren't you? Yes. But I think, David, this is a problem that we're going to get again and again, because the world and his wife now is on the internet, and it does seem that that's the only way we can get in touch with people. Why aren't they giving phone numbers anymore? Well, yes, I mean, a lot of companies do do business online, and they get the benefits of not having to have staff in mm. stores from doing so. But that does mean, in your case, and many people get frustrated that there isn't always someone on the end of the phone that they can speak to, and they try and redirect you towards online forms instead, which is scant consolation for you when you are, like you say, £3,000 down. Technically speaking, they are supposed to put an address and also a contact telephone number if they're doing business in the UK. But the internet is a, a Western front, it's, it's, it's a frontier, and that is not always the case, which is very frustrating. But you're going to try and sort this out today, yes, aren't you? Yes, we are. We are indeed. So hopefully we'll be able to come back, Teresa, with a solution to this. Thank Somebody you. to talk to on the phone. Somebody I can talk to now is Sarah Pennells. She's our personal finance expert, and uh, she's with here with Maureen. And Maureen, your problem's rather complex, isn't it? it because is your rather. brother John, mm. before your late brother John, before mm. he died, apparently paid a £1,000 on an electricity bill that had been calculated by a metre that he didn't even have and since then you had another bill for 700 pounds what is going on well when he died and we went through all his paperwork we found this discrepancy I, I phoned the company five times they keep promising to ring me back they never do and then last Friday we got this other bill for 700 and odd pounds and it includes electricity he's supposed to have used in the three months since he died <laughs> This is ridiculous, isn't it? For all on a metre that he didn't even have, probably. Yeah. Sarah, complicated, but do you think we can get to the bottom of this? I, I certainly hope so. I mean, as you say, the energy sector has got a really bad reputation mm -hmm. when it comes to generating accurate mm -hmm. bills and dealing with customers. The other issue, I think, is that the metre database, some of the information is quite old and inaccurate, but I think we're going to try and see if we can... Well, I'll give it my best shot <laughs> to see if we can get some result uh, resolution from Maureen here. So and what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to contact the company concerned and I'm going to see if we can get this sorted out for once and for all and get a refund on the energy bill that she should never have have paid for her late brother John. Brilliant and again I hope that by tomorrow morning we'll be able to come back with a resolution. <laughs> we hope so too Margaret thanks but in the meantime back inside the studio Gloria is going to be grilling a man who represents all of the energy companies. Good luck to him. <laughs> Am I looking forward to that or what? Because judging from our post bag and inbox, energy bills remain one of your absolute biggest bugbears and here's a really good example of why. <laughs> Dean Harrigan has spent the last three years trying to make sense of his energy bills. Even good old mum couldn't help him sort it out. Well, Lauren Slade is from the body that represents all the suppliers. Of, it's, uh, the body is called Energy UK, and that's important because it's all the main suppliers. Now, Lawrence, I have to tell you, this is the fourth time we've met. In fact, I think it's the seventh time I've talked to Energy UK. Mm -hmm. This is probably one of the most stupid and ridiculous situations I've ever heard. I think that, that last piece of VT, I would agree. It was extraordinary, and it obviously can't go on like that and you know part of what we're trying to achieve is rebuild trust with consumers and that doesn't help but, but the problem is it is going on I mean you heard even at the end oh. even though he's changed supplier and power is still sending him bills I agree and I think the point is that you saw Audrey from consumer uh, citizens advice there and I think yeah, we are on the verge of actually upgrading all the technology. We're about to roll out smart meters to every household in the country. And that is a massive infrastructure program that will start solving these problems. So you move away from estimated bills. And most billing complaints are around estimated bills. No, but you tell me this every year. I'm sorry, but you do. You're a very nice man. But you always promise that it's being sorted out. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But the reality is it doesn't change. We well, still for, have for many companies problems. over the last couple of quarters, we've seen complaint volumes fall. So for a lot of the large suppliers, a lot of the small suppliers, we're seeing complaints coming down as these investments I've talked about have come through. Well, I'm we sorry, billing, over let, let me just and say and this on that point. Billing complaints have gone up 50%. So how can you justify it? not that? across the industry. That's the point I'm making. And it's really important consumers understand 
that it's, there is choice now. There are 31 suppliers in this market. 310,000 households changed supplier last month. Something like 3 million will change supplier this year. You can change on cost, the amount you, ch you pay every month, every year. You can also change on customer service or the type of energy you want. But here's the point. I can speak from personal experience. I did take your advice a couple of years back and I changed my supplier. Guess what? I've now gone off the lovely, attractive tariff that they brought me in on and they've now put me on a standard tariff. And I know from this programme the standard it isn't always the best. Mm. But in this vein, Alex has been in touch to say that he's been with two energy companies who changed twice. Both promised to save him money, but they've actually become more expensive after he signed up. Now his current supplier are making it hard for him to switch, keeping him on an expensive tariff. So are you going to take a look at that and actually give us some results? I'll happily take a look at that, because the whole point is switching should get you a better deal. If you use some of the comparison sites or you just speak to your company, make sure you've got accurate meter bills, make sure you've got your annual usage, you should be able to get a better deal. We've made switching faster now, so it takes up about three weeks or less to actually switch supplier. But not always cheaper. It should That's be, and this point. is the thing. Since you and I last spoke, you know, there are barely a, a handful of tariffs under £1,000 a year. I checked this morning, the cheapest tariff on the market is £799. There are deals for your viewers out there, and it doesn't actually take Well, I have to leave to it at that point, but may I say you're a nice man, but I hope I don't see you in this programme again with exactly the same story. So do I. Thank you. <laughs> She's and I a bet charmer. A, she is, not she? I bet an awful lot of you have been hanging on to every word that Lawrence uh, said there because, uh, well, we get an awful lot of complaints about those bills. So let us know what you think about what you've heard, indeed anything on the programme, because we've been telling you how to contact us on email and Facebook. But, of course, you can use snail mail, good old snail mail, write to us at Rip Off Britain, BBC Key House, Media City UK, Salford, M52QH. There's the address on the bottom. Meanwhile, when it comes to saving money, it's not just you at home that are keen to bag the best bargains. Celebrities like to wash, watch the pennies too, mm. even when they've sold millions of albums. I don't think it did the man any good, did I? But, you make, a, but you make a lovely couple, I have to say. <laughs> well, well, throughout all fiddle. the programme, you've been sending us questions, and we've just got time for one to David. It's from Irene Coverdale, who says she's um, using an APP to help her filter out nuisance calls. It's worked for her, so there is good technology out there. Uh, yes, yeah, sounds like she's downloaded an mm. app onto her smartphone, and, and there are a number of these. They'll do a reverse lookup against the incoming number, test it to see whether it is a known spam number or whether it's something legitimate. They can be good. Be careful about installing any old app, though. That'll work on your smartphones. There are landline ones as well that um, you, you have a little box. It will screen the calls for you. If it's an unrecognised number, it'll ask someone to leave a message. And only then do you have to get back in touch with them. So there is technology for landlines as well as for smartphones. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, I have to say, we've been asking you to get in touch with us. And we've had loads <laughs> of emails. But uh, sadly, we've only got a little bit of time because we've had such a full programme. But I hope that tomorrow we'll have even more. But um, that's where we're going to have to leave you today because we are just about over time. Um, thanks very much to all of our guests and indeed to you for joining us. And we hope that uh, some of the things that you've heard today will mean that you can avoid ending up feeling ripped off in any way at all. And we're back here live at the same time tomorrow when we've got an experiment to see if haggling can slash the cost of your shopping. Mm. And we'll be meeting the neighbours who were so fed up waiting for better broadband, they set up their own network themselves. Good for them, I yeah. say. Also with us tomorrow will be legal expert Gary Ryan and an expert in all manner of shopping, a bit like myself, really, this afternoon. Her name is Iona Bain. We had to give so, you that story. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> absolutely tailor-made for me. So if you've got any burning questions for all of them tomorrow, do let us know. In the meantime, we've loved your company today. Make sure you're here. We'll do it all over again tomorrow morning at 9.15. So until then, have a great afternoon. And from all of us, bye-bye.